Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part three of my storing duplicate data series. If you haven't watched parts one and two, go watch those and then come on back. All right, so we figured out how we can have it so we can add an order from the customer form and have this data put in there automatically for us, right? Now we need to be able to add an order from the main menu, pick a customer, and have their address put in here. And to do that, we're gonna use an after update event. So if you don't know what an after update event is, go watch this video. I'm gonna explain it briefly, but this video will talk more about it. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. One of the easiest ways is to simply load that address information in here into this combo box. And then you can drop it right in here very easily using the column properties. Okay, so let me show you that method first. So here we have a customer combo, right? And it is, where's the data right here? It's based on the customer LFQ. Let's take a peek at it, right? Customer LFQ, customer ID, and then the LF field ordered by LF. So we get last name, first name. That's what the LFQ does for all of our customers. So what we're gonna do is, and we've got our default value here as well, okay? What we're going to do is we are going to redo this combo box and include all of the address data in there. Okay. So we'll go back to form design. We'll find the wizard. Now I, you can do this by hand if you're comfortable enough with these combo boxes and all that stuff. This is one of those wizards. I don't mind using. It's a good wizard. Okay. Um, find the values from table or query. My LFQ is this guy next. I want, oh, wait a minute. We got to add those fields into the query first, don't we? I, I jumped ahead. Okay, get rid of that. Delete. Find the LFQ. Here it is. Design view. Let's bring in the fields we want, which is address through country. Click, drag. For those of you who don't know, I clicked on the first one, held down the shift key, click on the last one, let the shift key go, and then you can click and drag and drop them all down here. Okay, same stuff, just adds those fields. All right, save it. Um, everyone always asks me, is it smart to go back and modify queries? Be careful if you go back and modify an older query. Usually adding fields to it is not a problem. You can always add more stuff. Make sure you don't have duplicate names. You just wanna be careful if you go back to an old query and delete fields or change things because you don't know what other stuff it might be, you know, relies upon this. Uh, and you can check dependencies and all that stuff. I got separate videos on all that. All right. Form design, one more try here, here we go. Drop down the combo box, drop it there. Let's go to the queries, customer LFQ. Now, we're gonna bring in that. That will be the first visible field, and you can bring in these other fields too to have those in the different columns in the combo box. All right, next, what do you wanna sort by? LF, next. Now, what do you wanna see? Now, here's the thing, remember, there's no box here to hide the key column because this is based on a query. So we have to hide that field. This is up to you if you wanna leave this stuff visible. What I usually do is I leave like address visible and maybe state, right? And then hide the rest of it. Cause this way, if you're dropping the box down, let's say you got two John Smiths. You could be, are you the John Smith from nine division street or 8833 Cantor? Oh, okay, you're that one, all right. So that, that makes it another way you can easily pick somebody. Right, next, storing it in customer ID. Store that value in customer ID in the order field. Right, next, what label would you like, customer? And we're done. Let me grab a little format painter. Click, click, resize, move around, all that good stuff. And yes, neatness matters. Okay, let's replace that default value. Replace the name, customer combo, and where's the default value? Right there. Equals forms, customer F, customer ID. All right, so now it's back exactly the way it was before. Uh oh, what do I got this? Oh, oh, wait a second, wait a second. I see, I made a mistake. That's one of the reasons I love this, this little new thing they added in like uh, Access 2007 or whatever, is I accidentally changed the control source to customer combo, which doesn't exist, and it's yelling at me here. I do this all the time. 
This should remain customer ID. That's the bound column. The name is customer combo. So that's again, one of my mistakes. I leave stuff like this in the video because if I make that mistake, chances are you're gonna make the same mistake. So just be aware of what happened. All right, another thing you might wanna do real quick while we're at it is just change your tab order. So you can put that customer combo where you want it, like after description. And of course, all those address fields too. Let's move these guys up here like that. Hit okay. All right. Now for the good stuff. Let's save it, close it. Let's open up at, let's, yeah, let's open up a customer form and come and open this up now. All right. So that's not, we don't have any default values in here, but this still works. That's what I wanted to make sure. Okay. Open it up from here now. Pick a customer and you can see there's that data. You can make this box wider if you want to so you can see it all. But when you pick one of these, you want this information in the box to go into these fields. All right, how do we do that? Well, we're gonna use an after update event for this guy. So this doesn't happen until you pick a customer and create a record. Okay, events, after update, dot, dot, dot. Now, in that combo box, you got multiple columns, all right? Sometimes I write them out in here just to keep my, my, my wits about me. Column zero is the first column. That's the bound column. That's the customer ID, right? Here, we'll do columns. Okay, column one is the visible column. In this case, it's last name, comma, first name. So column two starts your address data, right? Three is the city and so on. We can't do that. You gotta do that. Here, we'll do four equal state. <laughs> Might as well, right? <laughs> Halfway there. Uh, st city, state, zip, and six is country. So now knowing that information, this is what throws people. Is everybody forgets that column zero is that first hidden column. Okay. Now we know where this data is. We can very easily set that in our fields. We can say address, which is a field on the order form, equals customer combo dot column two same and then we just copy and paste address city state zip country okay here's city state zip and country and we got two three four five six okay all right, save it, debug compile once in a while. And yes, that's actually on a t-shirt now. And then close it, close it, close it, open it. We're on a new record, pick a customer, James Kirk, boom. All their information's copied into here. And that party. Now, there's one more thing you might wanna do because you can't put all the stuff that you want into a combo box. And I'll be honest with you, this works fine for small databases, but if you've got 200,000 customers, right, you might not want to load all of this data into a, into the combo box. It'll slow things down, especially if you're running over a network. You know, one field, okay. You know, you start getting 10 fields in here and you got, you know, it's rows and columns basically. So if your database gets really big, this might get slow. Another method you can use is to use DLOOKUP at the time that the order or the customer is picked. All right, that might actually run faster in certain circumstances, but this sometimes is easier to do. It all depends on which one you prefer. Also, with DLOOKUP, you can look up things that you can't put into a combo box, like long text. Let's say, for example, you've got notes on your customers, right, like this. And let's say you wanna copy these notes over to the notes for the order. Okay, in that case, what you can do is you could come down here and you could say notes equals D lookup the notes from the customer table T where customer ID equals customer combo. Just like that, D lookup. And in case this returns a null, you wanna handle that with NZ. Null to zero and we'll make it an empty string. So that will look up the notes field from the customer table where the customer ID equals the customer you just picked that's in customer combo. 
Okay, and if that's null, it'll return an empty string. If you want to learn more about DLOOKUP, go watch this video. And I cover the NZ function in this video. And now what you got here is debug compile, close it, close it, save it, close it, open it, right? Click, and I'll pick Getty Lee, boom. And now you get his address and all of his notes. Copied to the order. Okay, so that's a pretty cool stuff. Now, continuing on with this, as I mentioned before, in the invoicing extended cut, I've covered that, but I've also covered how to pick a product from a product list and add that to the order. There's a little more involved, a little bit more coding, but that's what I cover in the extended cut. See? And this is the same thing. You've got a product table now where you've got unit cost, markup, unit price, if this changes, it doesn't change all of this because this information is copied to the order. All right, so check that out in the extended cut of my original invoicing video. Now, members, I've got a special bonus for you too. This is something you guys have been asking me for for a while. We're gonna use, let me clear off these items on here. Let me delete the items on that order. We are going to create a product list box that you can have all of your popular products on it. We're going to use a multi-select list box. So you can say, okay, these are all my popular products. I want that, 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 and that. Add it to the order. Boom. See that? That's pretty cool too, huh? Right? Product list box. I'm going to make a button on here to open it from there. But that's what we're going to do in the extended cut for today for you guys. That's cool stuff. So there, I, I, I made a slide. I got to use the slide, right? So we're going to make an extended, we're going to make an, in the extended gut, we're going to make a product list box where you can pick the products you want, hit the button, and it goes over into the order like this. Uh, Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos, not just this one, all of them. There's hundreds of them by now. So what are you waiting for? Join today. Click on that blue join button and you become part of the family and everybody gets some free training classes and we all sing Kumbaya. And also don't forget to get your Access Learning Zone swag at the merch store. I got all kinds of new cool stuff. I got I got this stuff and hats and you just all, you name it. You'll find the links down below. Check it out. You want a bunny? You got a little bunny rabbit here. So that's going to do it. That's your little three-part series on why and how you should store duplicate data in your database. I know I tell the beginners not to do that, but yeah, there comes a time when you have to do that. It's like normalization, right? You can learn the basics of normalization, but sometimes it's beneficial to denormalize your database. I got a whole separate video on that. Look it up, do a Google search for it or search on my site. Um, but that's going to do it. That's going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. And members, I'll see you in the extended cut. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month. And yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. 
And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject. And you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.